Welcome to Sensibly Cynical. My name is Sean, and with us is special co-host Chanel. How you doing, Chanel? Good, I think. And Frank Jag, of course, but no one cares about him, but... Hey, Frank. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> okay, so what's up? Oh, no, we have a, we have a special guest. Um, she is a producer of a talk show, right? Uh, Cree. Yes. How you doing, Cree? Hey, how are you? Good, good. So... Explain, um, I guess, what you do and what's the uh, like just of your day to day activities with this uh, show. Sure, sure. Well, um, so I am the producer for a show called Sydney Like Australia. Um, the host is my friend Sydney. And um, basically, she got to start doing a sex talk and also just kind of writing about just different types of hip hop artists and musicians around the but um you know it turned into a talk show so we kind of talk about any and everything we talk about music we talk about relationships and something about things going on in the news like literally a couple minutes ago we were talking about the next episode uh discussing like the R. kelly stuff going on <laughs> so um you know we've hit some pretty big topics and just as producer i mean i i record the shows with her and then i edit the shows um and just make sure that they are ready already so uh, is it on the third episode? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. We're getting ready to do episode four. Mm -hmm. um, well, episode four is getting ready to air tomorrow. Okay. So it's on WRIR. Was that Richmond yes, Independent? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's a local Richmond station. But yeah, we have episode four airing the week. And um, just kind of going along with like the new year, we decided to do one about new beginnings. So like Sydney's roommate is from Russia and she was adopted at 10 years old. So like that's kind of oh. her new beginning story. Um, and mine, I was talking about getting divorced. So <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, Frank, do you have any uh, any questions or you know about uh, the talk show? Yeah. So, um, what's the so what's the um, so what's the talk show about? You said mostly sex and in. in well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, her Sydney kind of got her start on well doing her own sex blog. So we'll kind of tie in like a relationship segment. Um, we don't just talk about like sex per se, but just kind of like relationships in general. Um, but other than that, we'll talk about music or like art or, you know, kind of anything really. Do you have any advice for a young male <laughs> about 5'4 Italian? <laughs> <laughs> Keyword is 5'4. Like well, I'm sorry. Well, Nicole remembers that. This sounds really uh, Cree, specific. Cree remembers, I'm sure too. But yeah, so, uh -huh. so yeah, any, any advice for a single uh, male, late 20s? Early 30s, in my case. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I probably am not even the best person to give out dating advice, honestly. Um, <laughs> That's all right. She, she I, not I, told me I was undateable earlier. I didn't, I didn't oh, tell no. you. Oh, no. I don't think undateable. anybody's undateable. Yeah, it's not Well, not Frank's, Frank's going to test that theory once you get it done with the podcast <laughs> in about, about an hour. It's about finding the person to date, which is what we're working yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, actually, I was thinking about, like, doing a matchmaking service as well. Like, have you guys ever seen The Millionaire Matchmaker? Yeah. I have not. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, okay, so it's basically this woman that. who, like, uh, she started, like, a dating service, and she hand, like, interviews all the men, all the women, and, like, has these events and puts them together. I mean, actually, Sean, it kind of sounds like Meetup a little bit, which is how you and I met. But, right. um... But right. yeah, just, you know, taking a chance and just getting out there meeting people, that's really the only advice I have. So you said you were going to start a dating service. Were you going to, like, write, write code for an app, or...? <laughs> no, I wanted to start, like, um, like a, I don't know, like a club type of thing, or, like, I don't know, have events in like, dating. Speed dating, I've been looking for that. Yeah, yeah, but, like, different types of speed dating, you know, where it's, like, like I had an idea for a music speed dating thing, so like, it, an art speed dating. Right, so you're looking for variety, is that what you're saying, different yeah, locations? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So based on interest? I think people, yeah, people get nervous sometimes when it's, like, just left up to talking, which okay, so shouldn't be, because it's, like, the most natural thing. Okay, but, so um, yeah, just giving them other stuff. Uh, so your angle is if they, if people, for an example, if people have the same interests, right? They'll be willing to get to know the person in a setting like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. So are you? So you talked about this next episode will be about new beginnings. So and, and your new beginning about uh, being single again. So are, are you excited about your new beginning, your direction? Um. Well, 
I mean, actually, like the the divorce stuff that was like a couple years ago. So I'll say being single kind of sucks. <laughs> like yeah, especially right it. after that, <laughs> it's like being thrown back into this world of like not knowing what you're doing. Right. But um, ultimately, you know, I have enjoyed kind of like refinding myself. Sure. Do you feel like you're successful? Like you've been successful in refinding yourself? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I feel like I'm kind of a completely different person. Like in terms of just uh, expressing myself and like taking chances on things and just kind of enjoying life, you know, like no longer settling for anything. That's right, girl. Settling. Yeah. For <laughs> so when I left, when I left Richmond a um, uh-huh. couple, couple years ago, the the uh, the brewery scene, the beer scene was was pretty big there. Is that still the case? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean. I, I actually live like downtown now right and okay. um, there there's just so many like Richmond in general has kind of just exploded as this like tourist city like we oh. have um, the new bus system and um, you know I think they're trying to do all these like renovations to the Coliseum and we just have like just really cool things like murals around the city beautiful art live music mm. we have a lot of um arcade bars popping up we yeah have those the are popular bars. now in dc, yeah, the, it's, in it's, DC you too, can really it's definitely popular. find something to do <laughs> and it's kind of like play here pensacola yeah we're, we're in pensacola are all play. of you guys in in pensacola yeah unfortunately okay cool yeah. <laughs> panhandle right by oh. the it's basically alabama we're a rock <laughs> away from Alabama. Yeah, yeah. so oh, a, few wow. hour, a few hours okay. when we go I'm outside. I'm thinking it's parties. like <laughs> beaches and like sunny. It's Well, I mean, you saw beaches though, right? Well, yeah. yeah. Pen- Pensacola yeah. Beach, yeah. Okay, sweet. Well, then, but, I wouldn't <laughs> think it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, but you're... That's adorable. That's what people say when they haven't been here. It, it's yeah, got yeah. Hours, it's like the Caribbean. Um, mm-hmm. But pretty soon, pretty soon in a few hours here, we're going to be going outside. And everywhere mm-hmm. you go, people are going to be screaming Roll Tide. Yeah, Alabama. Oh, oh, oh yes, okay, right, okay. Yeah. National championships tonight. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Alabama always wins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I went to Virginia Tech, so I don't think we did too hot this year. <laughs> occasionally, occasionally, Virginia Tech was good. Occasionally. Yeah, so occasionally. I'm like, we'll have, Michael I think Vick. we start out strong, and then it's just like, mm, never mind. That's where Michael Vick went, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Virginia Tech <laughs> actually just... Um, they get a bowl game? I that, that's being negative, but I think they actually just... Um, ended their 25 year winning season. Not to be negative. Not to be negative, but they <laughs> broke their 25 <laughs> year streak. Sucks about them <laughs> <laughs> but no, they were really, really good. They beat. They started off beating Florida hey. State, and then um, things. Yeah, happened. I remember that. Hey, Cree, you can tell Frank knows how to make a first impression. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> no, but I just kidding. But uh, no, but um, so we met on uh, on Meetup. Frank, to be honest, Cree, you tell him I was actually a good Meetup host, right? Yeah, I think See? you were really good. So you it know what? When was that? Was that like 2015, 16? Do was, you remember? It was like 20. It was more like when I became a meetup host, it was like 2014. I believe you okay. would be a good meetup host, but you, you're really big in people's feelings and, and we got, manners and shit. No, ask. We, then we get like most of the people we get like really fucked up. Yeah, I mean, like, drinking was definitely a major part of it, like which it was, is great. Like I would, Like I would, most of my events were like, Bar crawls. Yeah, and I remember um, a, a trivia night thing too, and uh, which I was terrible at. But I mean, there were fun events. Like, like Frank, I would literally say we're meeting at this bar, and Chanel, I would literally say we're meeting at this bar, and I maybe in the description I'd put like, here's a few bars like Wear nearby. Comfortable shoes. Yeah, bas- <laughs> basically, and be like, and be like, we're and here's the here's the route, su- suggested route. Like we would get a consistent consensus when we're there but yeah literally and that's how that's how um me and me and uh her met so um yeah so anyways so are you um Get your microphone what's the um what's the what's the future of the show like how long is this like a limited is there these seasons to this show or is this uh, um, back to the show well, so <laughs> we're kind of just trying to like the sky is the limit with this thing i mean right now it's a radio show but then yeah. um you know we're, we're talking about like doing a podcast as well and mm-hmm. you know we want to like travel and see the world and interview people in all different places and you know really just have fun with it okay so basically it's it's um it's kind of based on how creative you want to be um going. exactly and that's yeah you haven't really decided 
um, the future yet, right? You just you see what right. happens. Right. Right. We literally will just think of something be like, yeah, let's try that. Let's That's, try that. Frank knows all about that. <laughs> I, I plan everything. I'm very... It's a great I way write to things live. down and stuff. <laughs> That's basically what her show sounds like to me is, well, we feel like doing this, it's like this podcast. That's why you gotta do it. Uh If it's not fun, if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. We feel like interviewing a a producer of a, of a radio show. Okay, we'll just do it. We feel like talking to Uh a comedian. We just do it. That's yeah, how, why you know. not? Like, I was looking at um, some of your episodes before this, and I saw you guys had, like, Reiki on there, which was, like, you know, I didn't <laughs> Reiki expect. Joe. Yeah, Reiki I don't... Joe or something. Reiki's awesome. interesting. Reiki's interesting. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not. I was, was a big fan of that. She said she was going to become a Reiki master. Uh, <laughs> I was, I, I've never had Reiki done, but I was talking about it the other day. That's why I was like, wow, that's so interesting that you guys had that. So I see you guys kind of doing like a variety of things as well. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, we do a lot of different um, things. Basically, whatever kind of similar to whatever's on our, whatever's on our mind. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, um, so what kind of, um, what kind of um, like activities do you do you do in Richmond? Like, do you is there a lot of like outdoors or sports or what do you what do you do like for well, hobbies for hobbies? Unfortunately, I am like not athletic at all. You have any <laughs> um, <hobbies? laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm just super into like music and art. Really, like, um, there's a huge live music scene here, right. um, and really like all different types of music. Uh-huh. I just love all of it, so I kind of try to immerse myself into that. Um, been like writing a little bit. I do a little music on my own, but you know, just trying to get more into it you know you know what i've noticed down south of the mason dixon is is everyone in a band no. yeah i feel like <laughs> there's a lot of south like... mason dixon everywhere you go there's a band playing like no like there's, there's never a shortage of bands no, <laughs> yeah. yeah i believe EDM, it i believe it the edm the edm scene's pretty big in richmond the electronic scene yeah, yeah. I mean, huge. honestly, there there really is like everything that you can think of. I feel like so kind of the same way that we're huge. just like, well, let's that's try awesome. it. I feel like everybody's on that wave right now. Of like, ah, I'll give it a try. So like, everyone's just expressing themselves however they want, doing whatever Dubstep, type of creative techno, things. techno, grunge. Yeah, yeah. So it's like things great. like <laughs> techno, dubstep, um, with Rainbow Robot Farts. What do you call it? Um, what was it? Techno, dubstep, EDM. EDM, EDM, yeah. Electronic I, dance music. Yeah, I call it robot farts. But anyway, I was wondering, is that like a, is that like a music that people like, or is it like, is it like a EDM scene, or is it more like a an ecstasy scene, and EDM just happens to be playing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know because I would I'm not too much into that scene and I'm more into like the jazz like jazz um okay. and hip hop you know you stuff like that huh do you play instruments uh barely I have a piano this is like such a random thing I had been wanting a piano and like randomly on Facebook one night I saw that there was a free antique piano <laughs> and I just had to like ship it to my house so I just did um so i have a piano and i used to play in like high school but i don't play it now i could never get myself to actually play my grandparents had one mm-hmm. yeah and, and, and you you it. always have like aspirations to but oh, yeah. it's like that yeah i was gonna be a child prodigy at some point in time but it didn't work mm-hmm. yeah exactly because i didn't actually formally learn how to play mm-hmm. Apparently that's a thing people like that yes yeah, yeah i used to, <laughs> i used to play the trumpet for years but then to get to any oh to move, sweet to move far well it was actually the cornet it wasn't really a trumpet it was a cornet <laughs> <laughs> it's just a short small trumpet but um uh-huh. to get to the next level they wanted you to practice and I'm not really big into that so yeah I, no I, that's the I worst part anyway. <laughs> like I could hit all the notes and I knew I could do all the notes but to get faster they wanted you to practice and that that wasn't that wasn't working for me yeah especially when you have so much going on I get it yeah. <laughs> What do you have going on, Frank? What you <laughs> Podcasts. On? That's what. <laughs> Not back then. <laughs> what? What happened? What did you have going on back then to the point where you couldn't? I was a lot more busier when I was younger. After I turned 22, life got a lot, I got a lot less busy. <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. Are you slowing down? No, I'm not slowing down. I just feel like I sometimes, the the environment changed <laughs> and it was more of a environment of I knew of to a point where I'm in an environment of what do I do now? Hey, uh-huh. hey, Chris, he's from he's from New York, so. Ah, okay, okay, cool. I was gonna ask if you guys were originally from down there or not. No, I actually okay. lived in Virginia. I was in I lived in Arlington for a while. Oh, so oh, sweet. Oh, 
cool. Yeah. So I have a question. Does Richmond have, like, a big history scene? I mean, I know it was the, the um, capital of the Confederacy, so is there, like, a lot oh, of... Oh, yeah, figures definitely, right definitely. That's what, um, that's what Poe was actually, going... Yeah, yeah, the house I'm living in right now was built in 1900, and it's just, like, this gorgeous older home. But there's so much throughout the city. They have, like, you know, the canal and the canal walk, and you can, like, just see different historic things as you're going throughout the city. They have a lot of tours and things that you can do. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, Shaco Bottom, is that still, that's still around, right? Oh, yeah, Shaco's pretty awesome. I think they even filmed you some movie you down there. That. Shaco Bottom. Explain why I would love it. It's like there's tons of bars. The the vibe is cool. It's a chill vibe, but that's where a lot of the. Um... Have you met me? No. The chill vibe. No, 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 no. no I'm Frank. I'm, nice to meet no, you. No, what I'm trying to say is Frank. Have you ever seen me in a chill is that, place? That's where. That's where. <laughs> did you not preface? Did not hear what I said? I said that's where all. That's where a lot of the good um, bars are. So I'm an alcoholic. That likes to sit <laughs> on my ass. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> No, but I'm just I'm just saying though. That's that's the busy that's the busy part of it. Yeah, it's like a concentrated area of fun. <laughs> you can kind of jump around there. There's actually a couple places here. There's like Chaco, There's Cary Town area. Um, Scott's Edition is kind of like where the newer stuff is. There's just a lot of like little, I guess, neighborhoods where there's a lot to do in those areas. But they're all downtown, so it's great. Yeah, it's kind of similar to, like, if you just go down to, like, a side street. If you go down to a side street, and there'll be a bar by itself on, like, alone on, like, a random side street in Richmond. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like a city. Yeah. No, but I mean, like, no, but I mean, like, a, like away from downtown. Like, oh, okay. even there's parts like Carytown. And yeah. there's, there's, like, neighborhoods that have bars, like, randomly by itself on, like, a side, on, like, a side street. Yeah. Right. That's so. cool. All right. So, is there anything? Um, so, what else do you? So, what else do you do with this Sydney, like Australia? Do you, um, is it just the show that you produce, or is there? What else do you do? Anything else with WRIR? Um, not yet. I'm actually pretty new to WRIR, but you know, looking for different opportunities. We're trying to actually get a live DJ show going as well. So, mm-hmm. um, hopefully, that will happen. <laughs> You guys have any so, questions for? So what goes into producing exactly? Because I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not <laughs> producing. You know, is a, a good question. It seems like it's a lot of planning and working, and and I don't know oh, any, it, about, anything it seems about. Like I was going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even like the most experienced, honestly. It's really just like that. Me and um, the host Sydney, we had met, uh, I guess, um, almost two years ago now, and we just like clicked. So as she had this opportunity, she was just looking for someone who would kind of be on the team with her, but someone she knew she could trust. And, um, you know, I have nothing but time. So, you know, just interested in in anything creative and especially dealing with radio, music, art, whatever. So, um, but honestly, really, it's it's not that hard. I mean, I feel like, I don't know if I'm downplaying it yet, but really I just um, listen to the episodes and, like, edit things that need to be edited. So, So, you know, removing things or, like, putting in um, clips or songs or whatever, but it's really just a lot of cut and paste. <laughs> so so I just want you to reiterate that. I don't know if you could say it maybe a little louder. So you're saying like, uh-huh. listening to audio and editing it isn't that hard? I didn't say it was hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I don't think it's, I don't think it's super hard, no. <laughs> so what, 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 he's trying, what he's trying to say is he's trying to give me shit for editing the podcast. No, no, no. Aww. No, what I'm not trying to do is give him shit for it. It, every podcast, he, he makes, he, he goes on for about 10 minutes about how I, I'm not nice to him. He doesn't he goes, do shit. He does all the work of, edit, of editing it. Well, I will say when, I don't know about you, Sean, but when I first started, which honestly was like a month or two ago, like the first episode that I edited took like three or four hours. And it was just yeah. like a ridiculous long time. Until but you like, get the hang you of know. it, it could take that long. Are your episodes typically? Oh, they're about um, an hour, a little bit less than an hour. Okay, cool. So do you do promo for it too, or do you just edit it and give it to her and you guys figure out how you're going to promote it? Yeah, um, well, Sydney actually has been making, like, the the flyers for the episodes, and she has, like, you know, a larger social media following, so mostly kind of the promotion stuff falls onto her. How big is her following for the most part, or? A couple thousands, I guess. I mean, but she's definitely, like more well-known because she was writing with another um, 
I guess you can say entity <laughs> before she kind of branched off and did her own thing. So she kind of was known from her previous stuff. So what did you do before this? Oh, well, I am a counselor. <laughs> so I was like a therapist, oh. a mental health counselor, working with kids and adults um, with oh, so disabilities with and stuff. Huh? So you work with adults? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, what's how you, you how, do you, how directly do you counsel them? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, I actually briefly, I lived in Florida for three years, and I will say those were the craziest, I, I worked with kids in Florida, and they were crazy. <laughs> like, All the crazy news really. stories is Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we did have a lot from, like, the panhandle and stuff and stuff. I worked for um, DJJ in Florida, so it was, like, the worst kids. But um, with adults, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the same sometimes, but uh, <laughs> it's yeah. It can it can definitely be a lot a stressful job. Oh, that sounds. Mm, it doesn't sound horrible, but it doesn't sound. <laughs> no, it is. So when, so when you're counseling adults, do you feel that you can be more direct with them? Do I feel like what? You can be more direct with them as you would a kid instead of trying to lead into oh, an yeah. answer. Like, Dude, I mean, you need to get yeah. Together. I mean, yeah. It's it's hard though because like adults sometimes are so stuck in their ways, you know, versus like being a certain way for like 13 years. They've been that way for like 40 years, so it can be a lot harder to change, and especially when it's like deep rooted mental health stuff, you know. Do they get offended easily when you're counseling them? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh definitely. Oh wow. So they seek yeah. counseling, and then you counsel them, and then they get pissed off about it? Or yeah, they- I, mean, <laughs> I definitely have to, like, carefully, you know, choose how I approach situations all the time. Because, like, it's one thing, like, just working with, like, regular, well, I don't want to say, like, regular or normal, but you know what I mean. Like, just people who are going through kind of, like, normal everyday problems, and then people who have, like, really like mental health issues you know so with those people definitely um tread a little more carefully so do you feel like a lot of the mental health issues in florida has to do with the heavy drug use hmm. no <laughs> well i mean okay i think it could be both i think it, i i mean honestly i i think that there are a lot of people who are coming from like we're super broken homes and I think that like we kind of underestimate the effects of PTSD on on people like oh people are like oh you you know he was in the military has PTSD but a lot of these kids and a lot of these families are like dealing with traumatic things daily dealing with abuse daily or neglect daily so it's like of course that's going to have an effect on how they grow and develop and you know react in social situations. So do they get assigned to you? Do they like get referred to you? Um, yeah, yeah. So they they just get referred and then um, it's kind of like if I'm available to take on another client, then I'll take on another client. I tried counseling once. (laughs) Um, She wasn't what I thought she would be. She kind of like, yeah, she kind of honed in on one specific thing and didn't let it go. And I haven't Uh seen her since. So... (laughs) Do you do that too? No, No, I mean, I think it's hard. It's definitely hard with counseling because, you know, even when you're like going through school and like learning different types of techniques, like everybody has different um, ways that they like to cancel, different theories that they like to subscribe to. So it's really, I'd say, about finding a match. So, like, even what, if you choose to seek out counseling, I would say don't necessarily go with just the first person that you call or, like, the first person that is available. Like, try it out and see if it's an actual match because I've, I've kind of heard that a lot, that a lot of people just haven't really clicked with their counselor, so they haven't wanted to continue. Yeah, that's what happened, so, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I can get that, yeah. <laughs> Do you have anybody under you or is it just you two um, is the two person yeah show? no right now it's it's just the two of us um but we do have guests like different episodes uh-huh. um so we're trying to just continue getting a variety of guests you know we, we'd like to have like male perspective of course as well sometimes so it's not just like us <laughs> is it weekly bi-weekly bi-weekly yeah okay. um the first and third Tuesday okay. or second and fourth. I might I might have just completely messed it up, but it's every other <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> what perspectives? Um, so, is it just perspectives on relationships, or do you go into more different perspectives? How far are you looking to branch out from the main topic? Oh well, I mean, it's kind of like like just whatever we feel like discussing that day. Like we had 
um, discussions on Brett Kavanaugh, and we hmm. had, um, like I said, we're going to do discussions on the R. Kelly stuff, so just on, like, hmm. pedophilia, I guess. Well, I, just, saw like, that, just cool, I saw that, I saw that, uh, what was it that that uh the docu the docu series yeah, yeah. I saw that that was yeah. crazy that was crazy I haven't even watched I all of it. it I mean if you think about it though R Kelly's starting to call call doesn't sound like such a bad idea I mean someone pays for everything you do and you just have to listen to everything <laughs> you say I mean yeah those are exactly like the, the girls the though that that would be like under my counseling when they grow up yeah. because it's like you again like developmental stages and like what age is normal to be exposed to certain things and then the things that he did expose them to and the abuse and the trauma and it's just like characterize r kelly in two words talented and douchebag oh yeah i know <laughs> and it's it's such like a terrible thing but it's like i know like i can't listen to his music anymore yeah, you know people know. are like oh and defending him. they're like oh it's okay leave him alone it's like no nah, that is a <laughs> sick man i see see i feel like i feel like i could listen to, to trapped in the closet Repeatedly and every time I could come up with a different mental illness of all these people. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> seriously. Like, it's like, that it's is like a 15 very minutes sick of uh, what the hell? Who was cheating on what with a. I know, right? Who was cheating yeah. on um, what with a. Um, it was a midget. Full... And, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 there yeah. was midgets and there was like so much crazy stuff going on. And, and on I think that was like yeah. during the trial time too, from what I understand from the documentary. Oh. So it's just like. What's going on with this guy? And even like right afterwards, right. Um, when he got off, he had an interview, and the first question was, "Do you like teenage girls?" And he was like, <laughs> "Like, like nineteen? Like, yeah. why would you? What? Yeah. <laughs> like, you just were on trial for child pornography, and you're trying to clarify what right. teenage means, and you're in your forties? Like, what is wrong with you?" No, I have a question, Drake. Drake is getting some backlash from because he 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 befriends fourteen year olds and, and really gets close to them and talks <laughs> uh, to them about some serious issues. Do you think Drake's headed down the same path as R. Kelly? Oh, gosh. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I did see something I feel like uh, with Drake was a younger girl. Um, I don't know how young she was, but she definitely she seems 14. underage. Uh, oh, she was 14? <laughs> I was thinking like 17, which is still underage for sure. I think his girlfriend's um, 19, right? Yeah. I think his girlfriend's 19 and the girl he talks to is 14. His baby mama. Okay, yeah, that. Yes, no. that's baby mama's an adult. Yeah. She, he with Nick, I don't he with think that adult Nicky males Nicky. should have friends that are teenage girls. Just period. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's a, there's a lot of pressure that comes along with uh, just males. Period. But like males in power and males with money. And I think it's any like ten times out of ten that's a situation where they're being taken advantage of. Young women's minds or young girls' minds are not mature enough to handle the things that they think they are, you know? So it's just yeah. taking advantage either way. I don't know if he's going to yeah. have, like, cults and pee on girls and stuff like that, <laughs> but um, it's definitely inappropriate, in mm. my opinion. I always yeah. thought that women were smarter than men and more mature than men, so... Yeah, yeah but girls, so It's like a weird thing, because it's like a, a, like a teenage girl's mindset mm. is different. Yeah, and, and honestly, and again, you're years. looking at teenage girls who probably mm -hmm. already are a little off mentally because of whatever they've been through. Like, even with the R. Kelly stuff, a lot of the girls had already been through, like, previous trauma or rape or molestation or whatever. So they're already a little, you know, vulnerable. And it's right. easier to prey on them because... Oh, not, yeah, yeah. Mentally, they're not all way they think where most people would be at that age. Uh-huh. So it's uh -huh. always kind of weird on that case. Yeah. In a, in a positive music um, <laughs> subject. <laughs> I know. Said, We're going so dark. Let's turn yeah, it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said, well, you said earlier you like jazz and who and R&B. I guess, so who's your who's your favorite? So who do you who do you like admire and who have you listened to? Oh, sure. Um, Daniel Caesar. He's... Okay. From I Toronto. I absolutely adore Daniel Caesar. Um, who else do I like right now? Um, Jasmine Sullivan. I've liked her for a few years, though. I don't know if she's put out anything recently. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm kind of like anything that sounds good to me, honestly. Yeah. I was gonna, when you said Jasmine <laughs> Sullivan, I was like, have you heard something? I haven't. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, nothing new. I, I, I play her old stuff all the time. <laughs> oh, okay. So are you a fan of like of the auto tune stuff? Like, do you like do you like auto tune music, or are you you just a fan of like pure? Um, um I, like, I you know, I, like vocals. Uh, I think I prefer just the regular music stuff. But um, I mean, 
I think some people have done a good job with the auto tune. It's all it's all kind of just in in whatever creative thing they're doing. If it sounds good, then it sounds good. But I don't I don't think they should make that their only thing. Right, right. You guys got. You know, I was I was actually, I was actually um, listening to something that um, by Michelle the other day, and uh, she was talking about how Dr. Dre back basically said if you can't do it naturally, as far as auto tune stuff, if you can't do it naturally, then you shouldn't it shouldn't be recorded. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think so too because then it's kind of like you're just relying on that, and it's like, well, are you really talented or right? Because then when you get on stage, you're not going to be able to hit those notes. I mean, you can just milly the milly it. Like, are you technology's saying technology's even Frank, more advanced now? Frank, are you saying T Pain wasn't good? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying it's not quality music. Him sing, though, it's a computer. Without that stuff, he sounds great. Well, I mean, he? the way he talks is kind of like the way he sounds with auto tune anyway. So it's kind of my like... favorite. <laughs> my favorite song of T Pain's was "I'm in Love with the Stripper." That was it. That, oh, that was my. That was my. It was the first one he released, <laughs> so he had just since the beginning, huh? Yeah, that was a great. That was a great song. I'm not even a little bit surprised because <laughs> I've literally seen you almost fall in love with a stripper. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that near where you guys are? <laughs> What's that? Is that near where you guys are? Tell no, I see. see it's like two hours away. Oh okay. Yeah. So if anything, yeah. we can drive and see T Pain. <laughs> if we really wanted to. If we really to. wanted to see the strip club uh, where he fell in love with that strip Wait, hold on. Gas is going Where was the strip club? It, it was in Tallahassee. Yeah. I'm okay. going. Where yeah, was it? He's from. He never mentioned the oh, exact man. strip club. But I mean, Google. She may have retired by now. Those no, that's okay. I just oh, want to go sure. to strip No, I think he married her. I'm pretty sure. Oh, for real? That's his wife? I think so, yeah. Oh, God. See, see, I feel like. I feel like places like that, though, where a, an artist fell in love with a stripper, mm-hmm. like, I feel like that's not a strip club anymore. That's more like a, uh, a historical building. Yeah, it's like a landmark. Yeah. Right. Like, they put the sign up a and everything. They should put the sign up front and everything. Like, it can happen to you, too. It can happen. Dreams. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like they should put a big old picture of her outside of it. Like, listen, sweetie, if you want to achieve your goals, start in here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like I should be head of advertising. Hey, it's worth a shot. <laughs> so we gotta find the strip club, guys. I'm going. Good. I'm already going. Did I don't know. Did you go? I'm already going. Did you go? I'm a little dangerous, but I don't care. It's Did not you? that dangerous. I'll leave just... my gold home. I'll bring my blade and leave my gold. <laughs> I mean, it's not that far anyway, and it's not too dangerous. I don't yeah. know. Let's see. I really wish we could find. Let's see. No, it's not. Off yeah, the top for those listening to this, we're actually. Googling a strip club, or Chanel is. I'm Googling uh. it, t- well, because, you know, the first thing that pops up is T-Pain. I'm in love with the strip club. No, but let's let's talk about that. I've been going to strip clubs my whole life. Yeah. I'm. Why am I not surprised? Well, I grew up six blocks from my one. My whole life. I, I mean, grew up six blocks from one. And a lot of people, because a lot, I had a lot of friends that became, quote, in love with a stripper, and they are now broke. Well, that was, that, that was the anthem of my 18th birthday. <laughs> but it's amazing. Wow. It's amazing these people that, that fe- have feelings. That night we went out to a strip club. They don't understand the game that is just for money. And uh, it's amazing these people that, that all fall in love with strippers in their minds. Let's see. Spend thousands of dollars. Well, I know she's a housewife yeah. now. Oh, she's a housewife. Now. She's older than him. <laughs> <laughs> They're oh. So- well, yeah. Richmond had a really bad storm, right? Oh, yeah, the snowstorm. That was a few weeks ago. Yeah, they were really I, bad. Yeah, I feel like we probably got like a foot of snow. Yeah, my ex-girlfriend sent me a photo of that. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> it was like, yeah, because I remember there was a snowstorm when I, when, I, when I was there, too. What was the name of this one? Oh, gosh. It was I a blizzard, not right? Tell you the name. It was a blizzard, I did not right? Enough attention. It was a blizzard, though. Yeah, well, I don't know if they even called it a blizzard. Um, oh, really? But because, yeah, I mean, it, I think it just snowed nonstop for like 24 hours. What? Um, and then it was, you know, city was shut down for a couple of days, but it was, mm. it wasn't that bad. I stayed inside. So what do you guys do in that situation? Because you guys don't have snowmobiles or four-wheelers in Richmond, I'm assuming. No, no, no. I'm so like you, the school were closed and everything. You drink. Um, yeah, that's it was how a lot of babies get made, I guess, right? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nine months from now, we will see every exactly Every blizzard, every blizzard, yeah, there'll be an escalation of uh, you guys hospital wanna, visits. Like, is there anything else to do in the house with nothing else going on, I guess, in life? That's so sad. I mean, I guess you yeah. could probably get an Xbox. Nobody Social media. On during hurricane season. 
I mean, they probably do. They literally have hurricane parties. I'm sure lots of people are drunk and pregnant at the end of that. Well, true. The <laughs> roof's caving yeah. in. Let's get it on. Might as well. What else are you going to do? Are we going to die? <laughs> that is so sad. Update, guys. T-Pain's wife is not the stripper. Dun, dun, dun. No, she's not. Oh, okay. No. Well, he was with her for a while. I'm she's pretty a sure. She's a super successful business <laughs> person, and I don't know if I should Well, I mean, so proud. are strippers, usually. Yeah, but like, <laughs> but like from other business ventures yeah. instead of you know, doing something strange for some change. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm proud of her for being. Money's money. I'm proud of her for being an entrepreneur, but I'm also mm-hmm. disappointed yes, because she is not the stripper he fell in love with. Oh, where yeah. is she now? She's just the woman that he married. Where is she now? Oh, still so married to him. They got three kids. You know, life's well, good. They always say it's very hard to turn a hoe into a housewife. Maybe he came to that conclusion. Maybe he had to let the stripper go when he met this girl. <laughs> well, then, something beautiful came from it. Yeah, they got three kids. You know, life's good. Mm-hmm. Life's good, yeah. When your dad makes auto-tune music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go home and tell my dad we obviously failed career-wise. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, but hey, I mean, if it works, why not do it? Would you be a stripper? Like magic Male stripper, stripper, Frank? Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's debating the <laughs> answer. <laughs> the answer is yes. I don't know if he wants to. The thing about it is, man, the thing about it is, it's a lot of work to keep a six pack. So that work that you would have to get a six pack to be a stripper would just wouldn't be worth it. I mean, not all of them have to <coughs> have it. You know, some people don't have the magic mic fantasy. Yeah, and see, I don't see the point in doing guy. it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like. I, I'm the kind of guy, like, if I'm not going to be Michael Jordan, why even play basketball? <laughs> like, if I'm not going to have that eight-pack, why even be a stripper? So you can get money. They, they'll pay you. Yeah, but I still don't, I still don't think... The money, know, right. That's why. I want to be the best, or I'm not going to do it. I mean, if you learn the right, like, skills and tricks of the trade, then I mean, you I, will be the best. You I, don't have to yeah. look the best. I found myself in one of those places one time. This girl got me to go over it. There's no skill. They just sit there and they just uh, do the helicopter. Well, yeah, okay. There's no, so. what skill the helicopter, what skill is that? Can you move your hips? Wait, the helicopter? What's that? Girl, you don't want to know. <laughs> it's a guy when he sits there and they just I'm sit there with their... I'm trying to get a visual and I can't even... They sit there with their boners <laughs> yeah. and they move their hips and it just, yeah. it just goes hey. around in circles. They wear like football socks, like you know how in strip clubs girls uh. wear the G-strings and money, guys put money in there. In the uh-huh. guy strip clubs... They wear football socks and you put the money in their socks. Oh, what if the sock falls? What if okay. he's gotten that much money that one night the sock falls off? He's lost the entire night. To be honest with you, after that girl convinced me to go, I never went back, so I don't I, I didn't I don't know. I, oh. I didn't spend that much time there. Wow. <laughs> well you know what? Our new goal is to get <laughs> Frank a job as a stripper. Yeah. All right. That's a strange that's a twenty nineteen just started, I mean, so <laughs> she said twenty nineteen. I mean, you know, <laughs> It's a lot of work, apparently, but it's okay. I'm going to figure out a way. 2019 <laughs> goes there to find you a girlfriend and to get you a job as a stripper. See, I just don't think the two of them really... I think they work against each other. It might happen. <laughs> I feel like they work against each other. No, because she's going to realize how much money you make, and she's going to encourage you to go. Oh, yeah. That, sound, that, sounds, like, that sounds like a golden, a golden relationship. That's not for success right there. It doesn't have to be explained, apparently. It's 2019. Yeah, that's all you need to know. It's going to pay for your entire wedding. <laughs> My wedding? I live, ever, I, I, I live ever. in an area where they have white sandy beaches. I'm going to go down. If he ever gets go, married. Do things and I do mean, it. I have hope for this. If I'm, work, I'm, if I'm going to put in work to find him a girlfriend, they're going to have to get married. It's going to work, yeah. <laughs> this is it. Exactly. So right. it's over. I'm just imagining right now me standing at the altar in Chanel. Having this girl hogtied and walking down the aisle dragging her. I will drag her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no don't go back. No. Don't, her veil will don't be Don't go leash. back. Don't go back. Don't leave. Her veil will be a leash. And I promise you, I'm going to make sure that I have to be one of the bridesmaids and I have to come right before You'd she You'd be goes. like, no, no, no. The altar is that way. <laughs> Listen, sweetie, I know it's a lot of sin because you wanted a beach wedding, but you got to walk, okay? <laughs> the altar is that way. And slide a slide a, a hundred under the table for her to go. Like if I ever get married, like I'm gonna be the opposite of like the guy doesn't do any of the planning, and the girl usually does all the planning. Like if I ever get married, like I swear to God, I'm gonna get so into it the girl won't want to plan it. Well, <laughs> all she's gonna really want to do is show up. So there's that. Plus, if she comes up with any real ideas, you might just say, "No, no, no, that's stupid." Would I ever say that to somebody? Yes. Name one time. I haven't thought of an exact time where you've said it, but I'm pretty sure you have.
Just about any idea you may have or someone else may have, you think it's dumb at some point. You're welcome. You're, you're making me sound like I'm not very accepting of other people. <laughs> you, you are, but I can't really name many <laughs> ideas where you thought, oh, wow, that's great, and actually said it. But then again, it's only been a few months. We'll work on it. Yeah, we'll work on it. <laughs> so, Cree, outside yes. of counseling <sighs> and the new work that you are doing, uh-huh. do you have any other interests besides music? Like, what's the goal outside of the podcast and the radio do you guys want to do youtube do you want to become visual um yeah definitely i can't i mean there's so much stuff that are kind of like in the works that i don't even want to say all of it right now because i don't want to you know give away the ideas but there's there's definitely a lot coming it's cool we like surprises so just keep us oh yeah yeah i will (laughs) in that line do you have anything um like promote like social media or Oh, sure, sure. Um, Well, uh, my Instagram is mostly where I am, so just infinitely Cree is my Instagram name, and um, the radio show can be found on sydneylikeaustralia.com. Before we continue, here's a message from A Teaspoon of Healing. Hi, I'm Dawn Damari, host of A Teaspoon of Healing podcast. On my show, people share their healing journeys, and I chat with nutrition, wellness, and Reiki experts. You can find me on iTunes, Google Play, and wherever you get your podcasts, or go to my website, teaspoonofhealing.com. And we do a we do a thing on the show, Sense More Cynical Thoughts. So do you have any um, any Sense More Cynical Thoughts on what you're doing or <laughs> well, anything? Or do you, or Frank Frank has some other stupid question before we get before to that? Before we ended this, yeah. before the end, we never got into this the sex that you talk about. And I'm a virgin, so I've got to uh, talk about this. <laughs> He's 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 uh he's vetoing the sense more cynical thoughts. So Frank, go ahead. So with is the there like anything that you talk about specifically about sexually that's important? <laughs> well, I'll I'll say that on this week's episode, there there is a very um, <laughs> it's almost like a PSA of what not to do. Uh, I'll just say it was a waxing gone wrong story for from a guy's perspective. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. I'll never do that again. I wonder if there's like a wrong way to wax. Oh, there is. Oh, hey, this wow. is an ex- don't ever let him hey. wax your asshole. It's not. Hey, fun. this is an explicit podcast, so there's no you know, <laughs> limit on what we can say. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll give the spoiler alert on here then. Um, well, no one but, listens no, to it. No, there's just hey. this story. She just, there's this story um, that Sydney has recounted of one of her coworkers' husbands, and he had gotten waxed, and. Um, down there and it turned into like an ingrown hair and it was so bad that he had to get surgery what oh, yeah. that was the last time he did that wow. yeah pretty bad <laughs> never do that again pretty bad that's cover. like the worst thing Holy that could happen shit. ouch like those are wow. stories you don't hear about yeah yeah and I guess it all came from his wife being like, oh, you can't handle getting waxed. But, like, he could have done his chest or something. Like, I don't know why he decided to do down there. But yeah, it's, it's He just painful. wanted to see if it would be smooth. It's painful. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he may it was bad. down there. <laughs> I don't know. Like, no, because it'll grow back thicker. Yeah. And yeah. Again. And maybe and grown again. Who knows? Ugh. That sounds Ugh. so horrible. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, it's by really the bad. way, Kree, I'm following you on Instagram now. Yay! Okay, sweet. I'll follow you back. Cool. I don't really post often, but we're going to work on that. That's cool. <laughs> Anything else? Guys, nope, that's before it. Before we get to the... We'll keep listening so Frank can learn about sex. It's going to be sex at 101 for him. It'll be very informative, hey, yes. Be like, you. hey, Frank, this is, this is called Blue Balls. <laughs> Which is what you have. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. So, any final thoughts? Yeah, just check out the show. Um, it's also on SoundCloud, so um, there's different ways that you guys can listen. But, yeah, just check it out and look out for more stuff. Frank, any final sensible thoughts? Or Knowing you, it's probably going to be cynical. He's, uh... I he's has run away. From he's run away. Sean. He's run away. And then he's returned. He's back. <laughs> All right, any sensible or cynical thoughts or whatever? My sensible thought of the day is... Um, thank you for telling us about Richmond, and thank you for telling us about um, about counseling as well. And uh, I'm so glad oh, you yeah. don't love EDM. <laughs> that, that makes me happy. No, she's she's, and thank you, she's th- R&B. Thank you for this story at the end. That, that, was, that, that was, was amazing. Beautiful. That was amazing. It was a beautiful sight. Oh, yeah. That we didn't have to <laughs> see. Yeah. Thank goodness. 
Um, thanks for teaching me about Richmond because I've never been. Maybe I might go. And yeah, you should. Well, it's the capital, so of Virginia. So uh, yeah, no, go. I've just never been to Virginia. It's like your story for Georgia, but actually <laughs> true. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, we'll work on that. I'll come. Awesome. And now I'll actually look into Sydney like Australia. So I went yeah. to Sydney. Yeah. My sensible thought is kind of similar to Frank's. Uh, thanks for coming on and telling us about the uh, show and what you're doing, and it sounds really cool. So Thank you. just thanks for taking uh, the time and for coming on uh, this evening. Yeah, no, definitely, and I'll I'll check out more of you guys' stuff too. Yeah, please do. Cause we're awesome. awesome. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Later, guys. Have a great Bye. one. See Bye. All right. We're still recording. So, Frank. Any uh, thoughts on on the show, or you yeah, think I've, it's kind of you? Actually, are you actually gonna check it out? So, um, actually, I, I did have another thought. So, I have actually gotten waxed down there, and I just want to tell out the guy. If any guys listen, don't do it. All right. If there are any women listening out there, do it. Go for it. If you don't have a high pain tolerance, just think of it as like pre childbirth. There's nothing weirder than getting your asshole waxed. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Go for it. But yeah, um, subscribe, rate, review us on iTunes. Frank, any last words? I have none. <laughs>